Hey folks, Korax here. When you think of Turkey, ah, not that, this. You most likely think of this. Or this. But Turkey is a whole lot bigger, diverse, vibrant and historic. The bridge between Asia and Europe, Turkey was the home of three major civilizations Roman, Byzantine and Ottoman. And that shines through its friendly people and the fantastic culture. But is also home to a new atomizer. Let's dig into it today. Seriously, Spica Pro. So what is it? This is an RTA, conceptualized, designed and produced entirely in Turkey by the fine folks at Cirrus Mods. Now given the negative publicity of vaping in that country and the overall falsehood going around, I stand in solidarity with my Turkish fellow vapers. Be brave and stand tall my friends. Together we can win. We will win. As such, this atomizer is no mean feat. Coming from that country, it's a big deal. Now let's take a closer look at it. From the get-go, we can notice the pride the modder takes in his creation. As I stated earlier, this is a bold step. Love this inclusion of the flag. Strong cardboard box overtly states MTL. The back has some significant details. Three things to note here. One, throat hit is a strong desire. This addy seems to address that. Enough spares included. Made in Turkey. Inside is a padded base with cutout enclosures for each stuff. Good packaging. Everything remains secured in transit. This is a made specific tool. I will come to it shortly. Spares baggie. Spare acrylic tank. Here are two extra airflow reducers. And the star of the package. Literally, because this Addy is named after the Spica star. And flat out gorgeous it is. As of now, I am liking the looks of it. Especially the lasered graphics on the chimney. And the uniquely shaped Buddhist pagoda styled flared mouthpiece stem. Airflow control ring. It has a stopper, so it doesn't go around 360 degrees. I like that. Juice control. I'll come back to it again. Replaceable and adjustable 510, more about it later. By the way, where my name is etched, you would have a serial number there. I asked for it this way. This oriental design, Spica Star, of the top cap 
is quite pretty and has a purpose here as well. This is a top fill addy. Those grooves of the star help you with opening the top cap. You place your nail at one of the grooves and turn. Nice smooth operation. Couple of soft rotations and the top cap is out. The top cap by itself is a nice piece of kit. Strong and sturdy. Seals the tank with a single o-ring and the threads are silky smooth. Two fill ports here. One of them of course will act as the airway but both are sufficiently huge. I don't think even 100% VG will have any issues flowing through. Tank and base separation. Oh yes, this is a deck accessible addy. Quite a small deck here. But we are talking about mouth to lung. So not made for fancy coils. However, Clapton still 3mm ID can be mounted I feel. The posts are KFN5 styled. With a girder system to guide the wire legs. These two are the placeholders for your wig tails. Two to juice ports in either sides and a central air channel at the bottom with replaceable airflow inserts. I will deal with the airflow system separately later. This insulator is PEK and there is one extra in the spares bag. The base plate comes apart as well for cleaning if you desire. These prongs stabilize the base while the chimney is rotated for juice flow control. AFC ring slides out. Ah, quite a beefy piece of metal this is. The AFC ring has tire tread style design going all around which helps in grabbing it. Everything about this addy so far is classy and strong. Sits over a single o-ring, spares are included. And here is the stopper. The chimney is a three-piece system. It can be adjusted externally to reduce the size of the chamber. Effectively tweaking your flavor and throat hit positively. And here comes the use of the special tool. Pull it out and you have a hex key to rotate the chimney. But not directly, you must pass it through the drip tip. And yes, the drip tip here is custom designed. A mashup of stainless steel and Ultem. This is a one piece unit by the way, cannot be taken apart. It also has these two prongs to marry with the chimney stem for rotation. That's how you achieve juice flow control. The mouthpiece being standard 5 ton sized, sure you can use any of your drip tips. But with them, you will not be able to get juice control. So drop it down the drip tip. 
notice the exactly 3 mm gap here. As you screw in this tool, the gap reduces. And so does the chamber size reduce. By way of the chimneys, third piece screwing out inwards. Now let's take a look of how it is working inside by sliding out the second piece of the chimney. Main chimney that is the outer and second chimney which is a slight fit on the first and here is the third chimney part which is a screw fit on the second. It is actually just the chamber ceiling. Remember, the tolerance is just 3 mm. With the drip tip attached, it will come down to this level, which is roughly 3 mm from the coil, because you will be stopped at the last thread or two. Without the drip tip, it will just unscrew out fully and drop on the coil, effectively shorting it. Two, without the drip tip and you holding it, the juice control will keep rotating without anything actually happening inside. So, caution, using it through the drip tip is a must. Glass tank. There is an acrylic spare in the package by the way. Now, this glass is one seriously tight fit affair going on. You cannot easily dislodge it. For which, you drop it in a glass of lukewarm water, keep it immersed for a few minutes, that will soften the o-rings and now you can slide it out. But you will generally not need to remove the glass because it can be cleaned with the chimney attached. Now let me give it a wash and get ready for setting it up. Remember though, the spiker comes neat and tidy straight out of the box. But it is always wise to give your addies a thorough initial wash before use. Here we go. So this is the breakdown of the Spica Pro. Drip tip, top cap, tank assembly, chimney sleeve, chamber top, deck base, AFC ring, base plate and the airflow insert. The next step is to loop the o-rings up. An initial must for every ID. I use Vaseline, you can use some e-liquid instead. Simple reverse process to put them back, attach the AFC ring, note the stopper notch, there is a groove cut inside the ring to slide over it, marry them up. Attach the base plate, align the prongs with the slots, put in the airflow insert, don't forget to add the PEK insulator. Get the chimney parts together. Mm -hmm. 
Thread in the top cap. Drop the deck base into it. Drip tip. Remember the prongs sit in the slots. A slight wriggle and voila, we are all set. As of now looking great, isn't it? Now as the box boldly says, MTL RTA, let's rebuild it and see whether the statement holds some truth. This section is specially for you, Brad and GNT, who commented yesterday. Using my usual 28 gauge canthal, work hard on a piece of wire, heat it up to remove some of its flexibility. You may use a torch, but a lighter works just fine. Wrapping a 2.5 mm coil. The special tool can be used as a coil wrapping rod, but it is 3.5 mm. And that is nearly the entire deck space of this ID. So it is not suitable for the Spica Pro. For making a micro coil, you can further heat it up and squeeze it to a perfect tubular shape. But I am not sweating over it. This will work fine for now. Now, you can place it either parallel to the posts or slanted. Note that slanted reduces leg length, so lesser chances of hot legs. Tip: Mount the legs counterclockwise, because when you tighten the post screws, which would be clockwise, the wire leg will not slip and try to wriggle out. Repeat it the other side. Snip off the excess wires. And here's another trip. Always tuck in your coil legs. Else they may short out with the chimney. Especially in case of tight spaced decks like this one. Reposition the coil if need be. And maintain a 1.5 to 2 mm air space between the coil and the bottom air channel of the deck. If your coiling rod is sitting over the deck walls, you will have the right air space automatically. Time to check the coil resistance and test it. Oh yes, all is fine. Now let's cool it down and wick it. Using Japanese cotton, Cut a small piece of roughly 1.5 cm width for a 2.5 mm coil. Then peel off the hard surfaces. Now roll it. Tip: Rolling converts your cotton towards an effective wick. Take hint from oil lamps. There's a rolled wick there, not just a piece of cotton. Insert it into the coil. And slide it back and forth, so that it sits evenly inside. Now trim the legs off at roughly 1 cm from the coil end. 
each side. Place the wig tail inside the space holder by bending it in an inverted U shape. Don't just press it down. Same with the other side. All good. Now let's saturate the wick and test it. Using 6mg and 70% VG juice today. Superb! Now let's assemble everything up and fill the tank. Caution! Close the juice feed holes shut. And also close the AFC as well. This will avoid any accidental flooding of the chamber while filling your ID. Remove the drip tip and then open the top cap. Fill till the portholes, don't overflow it. Invert the addy and open the AFC. Open juice control and wash the bubbles. Just kidding. But yes, bubbles prove that your addy is not airlocked and is going to wick well. Ohms are still constant, firing it at 17 watts. Wonderful taste, but tight as hell. I am a restricted lung header. I don't do mouth to lung, not proper mouth to lung. This is okay, manageable, but it is a tight restricted lung. But flavor is top notch. It truly is a MTL RTA. And I am with the 7 star head insert. And the whole thing is completely open. That itself is tight. But 70% VG juice. It is keeping up perfectly. No waking issues. I wonder what it will be with the 3 star head. Airflow reducer. Let's check it out. You receive a total of 3 airflow inserts. One installed and two in the box. One end of the stem is a flat head screw while the other end is star shaped. You get a 7 point star head, a 5 point star head, and a 3.1. Obviously, more the number of cut points, more the airflow. 7 being the airiest and 3 being the tightest. Those cutouts are 1 fifth of an mm each. Same across all the 3 airflow inserts. So, with the 7 point head, you achieve a total of 1.4 mm airflow. The 5.01 gets you 1 mm airflow. And the 3-hole insert will give you a mere 0.6 mm air. 
These truly are MTL numbers here folks. Let me demonstrate the tightest reducer. and I'm still keeping it fully open. Too tight. Not my cup of tea. <laughs> but the throat it, shoot it up. If I close it down, one air hole open now. Can't do it. <sighs> Reminds me of 2012. Those days, addies were like this. 6 mg is feeling like 12 mg. Not quite my tempo. I'm sure with the 5 star head, it'll remain the same. So I'll go back to my 7 star head's airflow insert. <laughs> 7 started airflow insert is my kind of vape but overall this atomizer it looks nice it vapes well let's do the pros and cons pros there is a whole lot going on with this ID some of them make it unique as well let me give you my top 10 first and foremost a perfect draw yes it's a mouth to tongue ID the whole concept is geared towards it and I'm not strictly an MTL guy. I am strictly a restricted lung hitter, but I am thoroughly at ease with the Spica Pro. At the fully open configuration, I am happily vaping away this Spica Pro since over a month now and I am thoroughly enjoying it. Enjoying the draw that is. Moreover, like I just stated, the flavor out of this Addy is phenomenal. My e-liquids never tasted this is good before. Secondly, the draw can be modified by anyone with the use of these airflow inserts. Externally mounted at that. No worries about ruining your setup with this arrangement. Thirdly, a very comfortable air saving. Besides the airflow inserts, you can further fine tune your draw by selecting one or a combination of these five holes. And the bloody thing is strong and sturdy, yet so easy to operate. Two things are done nice here. One, there is a stopper. Two, there is a thoughtful grip design going on all around. Which besides helping us to rotate it, is also aesthetically pleasing. And we cannot like enough this innovative chamber adjustment. Some real cool stuff is going on here, isn't it? That reduction of the chamber does two things. One, it enhances the flavor. We know smaller the chamber, better the flavor, right? Two, it also increases the throat hit. Remember, shorter chambers also compact your vapor. Furthermore, all being done externally, you can modify this arrangement on the go by use of this special tool, which can be carried in your keychain, if you so desire. But let me be honest, we will generally not need to carry this. Because once you find your sweet spot, how many times do you re-modify it? Another beautiful thing is its top filling. Absolutely easy to refill on the go. The top cap rotates smoothly. And I'm liking two things about it. One, the beautiful CNC cut star design. Two, it doesn't rotate accidentally. Because you have to give its initial turn with your nail and then you can rotate it freely. But caution, remove the drip tip, else it will rotate your chimney, thus readjusting your juice control. Now while on juice control, this is one feature I love in my addies. As I often repeat, this is a feature which makes you sleep in peace, knowing that once you have closed it, there is never a chance of any leakage from your addy. No, nada. And it is also done swiftly in the Spica Pro because of the drip tip prongs 
and the matching grooves cut in the chimney stem. And hey, you must have noticed how easy it was to set up, right? The KFN 5 style girded posts really makes it easier to trap your coil legs. And the wick tail placeholders of the deck, both the sides, are very welcome as well. It just takes 5 minutes to set up this ID. And not to forget, this is a deck accessible ID. Perhaps one of the most important features of a RTA, a must have. Another important factor I look for in my IDs is that it should look good to intrigue me. The Spica Pro like I stated earlier is gorgeous in my opinion. The chimney engravings, the gorgeous drip tip, the superbly done CNC cut in the top cap as well as the AFC ring. All add up to one very sexy RTA. Besides, the overall workmanship is fantastic. Everything is neatly done. No burrs, no gashes, no imperfections anywhere. Even the threads are silky at all places. Thus things sit and marry up perfectly in this ID. By the way, the materials used are not bad either. 304 grade stainless steel all along, PEK insulators, borosilicate glass made by Schott Germany, reinforced nitrile o-rings, what have you. And all put together in just 5 parts for our day to day use. The drip tip, the top cap, the tank assembly, the internal chimney and the whole base unit. Just 5. This is thus an engineering marvel. Very well done Team Serious Mods. And here is the best kicker. You receive a complete package for your money. All three airflow inserts, a spare acrylic tank, spares baggie, everything that you should generally have. I hate it when manufacturers don't include these, especially a spare tank, glass or plexi, whatever. And some even don't put a spares bag inside. Not cool. But the folks at Serious Mods are totally serious about it. We receive everything with the Spica Pro. And finally, all this at a nice price point. I typically don't deal with prices in my reviews. But with the Spica, I must mention this. 111 euros for this complete package is a nice price indeed and tax included it is a price done right yes you guessed it i am thoroughly liking this atomizer in my opinion it has no cons certain niggles of course everyone has little niggles while at nitpicking i wish the drip tip was a user separable two piece unit. I know it is purposefully designed for juice control, but that could be achieved with just the bottom section. Why put this ultimate part machine fit? If that area was a 5 ton housing, we could have used our drip tips over it, sometimes preferred by many. Now don't get me wrong, the drip tip actually is pretty comfortable. Sits nice between your lips. But you get the point. The second niggle of mine is its frivolous juice capacity. Forget the TPD compliant tank reducer which brings it to 2 ml. The standard capacity of this atomizer with the glass tank is 3 ml. With the acrylic it is 4 ml. Nice strong glass by the way. It is a 1.8 mm thick glass tube. And that is because of this huge chimney. Yes, it is a nice innovation to have this adjustable chimney, but that is coming at a cost. Cost of low juice capacity. So in my opinion, if they sold also as an add-on spare plain Jane straightforward two-piece chimneys for the not so keen chimney adjuster vapors, we could have added another, if not two, at least one more ml of juice inside the tank. But that is all a wish list. Nothing is a deal breaker here. 
for the effort the team at Sirius Mod put in, they have triumphed it. I give it 5 star folks. You guys have done a wonderful job. Spica Pro. The way a RTA should be. Received it about a month back and have been using it continuously since then. It's faring pretty well. No complaints here. If an IT is to be made for MTL, this is the way it should be. The bottom line is, the Spica Pro does its job fan-freaking-tastically. Thanks Engine and the folks at Team Serious Mods for sending it to me. I am deeply in love with this atomizer. And I am sure you guys will love it too, especially the MTL vapors out there. Full marks to Turkish vapors for getting it so right. And thank you my friends for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Wanna give me a like? And those who haven't subscribed yet, please try and click that button. Bye for now folks, I'll sure catch you again. And as always, remember, vaping is a healthier alternative. And we have the right to make that choice.